All right, guys, so I'm back over here at Auto Corral here in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, I'm just helping them out with a uh, 2013 Ace. I'm back on this Ace with the water heater issue. And here's another quick tip Tuesday thing, because it's still Tuesday. I just did the water heater. Who knows when I posted this? But here's the Ace right here. And this is a roof issue. And uh, this uh, kind of harkens back to these rubber roofs where I talk about the front cap and the rear cap. Let's take a look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. So the rear cap is actually popped up loose here. That molding was only secured by, I don't even know, not counting the self-tapping aspects of it, maybe an inch long screw. So definitely that was a, a bad idea from the factory. Uh, and then if you notice under here, the rear cap wasn't really secured by anything more than staples. And by the looks of that screw, I think water might have got in there. So here's my standpoint. When this this roof was put down, this is a it was like a TPO type roof. I would have liked to have put it over the top of the rear cap right here. Actually, the instructions say to do that. That way, when this inevitably would have happened, at least the rubber roof right here would have still directed water over the top like a shingle. But now, because this is underneath, when the water comes in right here to the level point, it's just going straight down underneath the rear cap into the wall. Which is why I do like to put it over the top of that cap material. I do it on the front and rear caps. It's, uh, I guess, somewhat controversial because I don't know how many com comments I've gotten telling me that they're all going to leak because of that. But I've never seen a leak because of that. So to fix this, obviously I won't be using a turnabon. <laughs> I have to take this molding completely loose, get all the sealant out of the way. Uh, probably secure everything and then put longer screws down and then seal over the top. So let's do one thing at a time and get the molding off. Alright, I'm not saying this side had a problem too, but that's the screw I took out of that side and it's all rusted. Uh, I don't think anybody did anything wrong other than build it wrong. I don't know what structure's underneath here. We might just have to put longer screws or double up the screws by drilling out holes here too. So let's get this thing pulled up and let's take a look. All right, so let's get that pulled out of the way and let's see what we see. Let me look at this. What do I see? I see water in there. I don't see any sealant here. I don't see any sealant on the bottom of the molding. So they never sealed this thing. All they did was screw it down and seal over the top. And that, the sealant on top, that's flashing. That's not sealant. That's supposed to redirect water. The sealant underneath is the actual primary seal. So there's one of your problems. Huh, wonder how many left the factory like this. That's really disheartening to see this because that's, that's a flaw from when it was manufactured. Which, you know, I'm not too surprised. I don't generally uh, defend the factories. Uh, but now I'm just wondering how many hundreds, possible thousands of these might be like this. That's kind of like basic. You forgot sealant on a roof. Don't do that. All right, well I got that cleaned off. I pulled one of the staples out. Looks to be about, we'll call it a half inch long. Probably not doing too much either as far as holding, holding that thing down. <laughs> so this is just the, uh, the rear wall phylon material stapled down as I did the radius wrap. Well, let me finish cleaning all this up, all the staples out. And uh, what I'll probably end up doing is running a bead of sealant underneath this material right here so it glues itself down. Set up the molding on top and seal everything. Well, guys, I've done some preliminary inspections and I don't like what I see. So, if I were to put a screw right here 
and screw it down. It's not grabbing onto anything because it's just going into the uh, eighth inch Luon, which is right here. That's why that didn't hold. That's why the staples didn't hold. If you look underneath back there, that's the end of the cap. So that's where the, the structure, the frame should be is right there. So that's a good two inches back from here. So if I were to grab this screw and maybe put it back here, let's see if we grab anything there. See, there's still nothing there. I would have to go back even further. Right. So that actually grabs something. So I'm gonna have to move this holding on top back to here. And then, man, that's gonna look like junk. But, so the molding will be here. I mean, I could trim this material off, but I don't know that that's going to do much good because I'll have all these holes I still have to get rid of. Might be a good application of a turnabon right there. But I don't know yet. I'll have to get all this cleaned up. You can see water's getting in there pretty well. I don't know how long water's been getting in there. It's a good thing this is Arizona, put it that way. We don't get a lot of rain here. If this was like, I guess, what, Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, where's a place to, oh, Washington, that's a place that gets rain. This might be a bigger problem. Time to put my, my thinking cap on, it might be big brain time. Okay, I got it all cleaned up there, you can kind of see where we're going. I went ahead and I probed to see how far back the, uh, the framing actually goes, so this is about the start of the framing there. So I need to be at least this far back and that's about two inches. So two inches back from this roof edge is right about there. That's where the framing will start. This is file on and actually bent down. It has a lot of spring to it. It wants to bend back up. So I could put this back on and it would have to go right about there. I mean, ideally the factory would have had this this edge cut off, but I still have to make sure these holes aren't going to be exposed so I can't cut that edge off. So I'm going to try to use this molding right here. It's a little bit wider and I should be able to. If you look right here, I got that's a two inch mark where the screw should go and that'll be uh, an inch from that point. And it should put me right about there. So it's not going to be quite as nice because it won't be painted and then I can fill the scap right there with a sealant underneath and on top and it will look a little bit better and because this is so wide it'll help keep that spring from trying to spring back up so what I'm gonna do is I will actually screw this edge down with some uh, truss screws I'm gonna put sealant underneath it so that it seals it up really well actually as an adhesive to hold this down anyways and then when I put screws through it'll seal the screws uh, but what I need to do first is cut this trim to fit and then mark where these holes are going to be so I want to put a screw through here and then try to put a screw through there on top of it and find out I hit a screw that I just put down so those are my plan should be better than at least factory let's see how it goes all right, so I'm just finishing marking these up. It's got the molding laying on top of it. So just mark these holes. And then when I pull it off, I'll know where not to put screws. So I can go in between. I don't have to put one every other time there. But I want to put a few just to actually hold, hold this down. So next thing I'm going to do is just put a bead of sealant under here. And it's just going to be Dicor roof sealant because It'll stick to both surfaces. It'll make a mess, but it's a messy job. Definitely gonna wanna try to get it squeezed in there as much as I can on both the corners. That way it acts as an actual water dam and then I'll show you what I do once we get this all put together. I am just using the lap sealant Dicor acrylic stuff. Uh, it is a decent adhesive. It's not the best adhesive, uh, but if anybody has to take this apart in the future, 
uh, it'll let go a lot better than any sort of real adhesive. Uh, real adhesive will stick to this and then when you're trying to pull it up, it would just rip. And you may not want to rip this if you're just trying to take that off and put it back on again. So I think this is going to be the best option. And then ideally you would just put butyl tape on, uh, underneath this in between. But because this is so wide, it would need two, two passes of butyl tape to uh, be pretty good. And then they'll have the seam right in the middle of the hole of the butyl tape. So why even bother putting butyl tape on there? So I'll use the same sealant again underneath as a sealant and then seal on top. <sighs> Hopefully that makes sense. We'll see it all. So I'm just squeezing it up underneath there. I want to make almost two passes. If you can kind of see one in the back where the holes are going to go. And one in the front to keep water from coming in. So I'll squeeze it back there. And back on top of these holes. So that's what it's going to be like that entire way. All right. And then uh, hopefully... I'll be putting some screws down next time. All right, these are those truss last screws I'm going to use. I like them because they got that washer head so it spreads out the, the pressure on this material. This is pretty thin material. You see those, some of the staples just went through anyways. <clears throat> well, this isn't my proudest repair, but I got to do my best to keep these holes from letting water in. So... And I just had the file on screwed down. And when I screw the uh, molding down on top, it'll really squeeze it down because it's so wide. So the nice thing is once I squeeze out of here and I go over the top, it, it'll actually be all enveloped and the sealant will stick to itself really well. This is another reason why I wanted to use that as an adhesive. Okay, so now I just have to put my sealant on top and screw this thing down. All right, well, there's my double bead of sealant. Make sure you get in between the two pieces of molding so that water doesn't get in between there very easily. And now I just put this on top, and this is where we hope for the best. I only have two marks to go off of. One there, and one there. <clears throat> So that's pretty much how it's going to look, except this will all be silicone or die cord in. All right, let's see if I can do this one handed again. So I'm just going to be using some more short screws because I'm really not going very deep. There's my mark. Just go on that side of the mark. And. There we go. See, it oozed out and it tightened up. It's got a lot more screws to put in. Well, so that's what it ends up looking like. I did put a screw on each hole just because it just didn't seem like the spacing apart was going to work very well. And it got oozed out everywhere. So we got good adhesion everywhere. And then I did actually change them out for inch and a half screws. Now, this should be a lot better. The last thing I have to do is just do something ungodly and just fill up all this right here with a die core. And then it'll all be encapsulated at that point. So the factory should have secured it like this originally. This shouldn't have existed as an overlap. That should have been trimmed off and then that just would have been the rubber roof seam right there. But because there's so many holes there, I just can't leave it like that. And yeah, a turnabon might have worked, but it would have been hard to seal and a turn up on. That would have been a mess. All right, so this is pretty much what it's going to end up looking like. I just put a bead on both seams. Obviously cover up each screw hole. I just sealed underneath at least this time, unlike the factory. And then bring this entire edge all the way across so that all of that's underneath. The only other thing I would point out, even if it's not this job right here, if you ever see a roof like this where the molding uh, has this gap right there, what I like to do is completely fill that void with a radius. That way when water comes on, it just doesn't pool right there. The, uh, the sealant keeps it from pooling and it makes it go over the edge. Uh, pooling water will get underneath there no matter how well it's sealed. 
So something like that is what I would recommend doing. You now the water can't just sit right there because it already has a pool, a pool of sealant. All right guys, so this is not my proudest moment. Seems like all you guys ever see is my not proudest moment. So this is what it ends up looking like. Should be at least uh, waterproof now. And now if water comes in, it's gonna come around. It won't get pooled up right there. And with the wide molding right there, it's doing a better job spreading out the weight. Even at Eternavon, if we would have used it, it would have torn under the stress of the, uh, the Phylon trying to push up. And uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. So there you have it. Another uh, easy job turned back. <laughs> More difficult than it really needed to be. Uh, this is what, a 2013 Ace ACE. Uh, can't say it was built right. I'm glad that there wasn't any uh, water damage on the inside and we caught it when we did. Uh, this should last a while, but again, this is why you have to check your roofs every year. Uh, short of uh, manufacturing some sort of a, I don't know, metal band. This would have needed a new rubber roof at least for quite some... That, that, that was like two inches I had to fill. That's crazy. I don't even know why the factory would do that. At any rate, thanks for watching, guys. I guess the good news is, it doesn't really matter this trim wasn't painted to match since you can't see most of it. <sighs> All right. Stop complaining. The factory knows what they're doing. The factory knows what they're doing. Don't mock me too much for all the sealant we're using. I'm sorry. All right, so I measured this out. I'm gonna go cut this to length so it can go down. The good news is now I don't have to clean off this old stuff. So it's one less. I mean, it's still a lot more work, but I don't have to clean this off. So some success.